I'm Norman Allen, and I, I'm going to talk today about homeopathy. This is the University of Toronto, and uh, I worked here from 1984 through to 1991 as Bruce Pomeranz Research Associate. Bruce Pomeranz at that time was replicating the work of Ben Veniste on homeopathy, on ultra-dilute antigens, homeopathic antigens, that would cause, though there was no substance there, just the signal from the antigen, it would cause the degranulation, the release of histamine by human basophils. That was work that was published in Nature and then controversially debunked by Nature. Um, very interesting work, and you'll find a report on this on my website in the Treatise on Pattern and Resonance in the Natural World, the first chapter, Beyond Substance. Which we'll talk about this later work I'm going to speak to you about as well. Because of our association with Ben Venice's work on ultra-dilute homeopathic antigens, we were approached by a Toronto University microbiologist, uh, Amenir Abu Harda, and his postdoc student, Mohamed Iwada. They were working on an assay, a viral assay, a DNA assay, working with a potato virus. And it was a, they'd set up, they were working with a technique for identifying the particular virus. What you do is you take a single strand of the virus and you dot it out on blotting paper. You dot it out at, at a one-tenth dilution, then you do it one in ten, one-hundredth, a thousand, uh, ten to the minus four, ten to the minus five, serial dilutions, and then you bake it onto the to the blotting paper. And then you take a strand of a single strand of DNA that you want to identify, and you wash it across this target. And if it's the complementary strand of, of the target that you've baked onto the paper, it will bind with it. You can identify this visually either with radioactive phosphorus, phosphorus 32, or in this case they were using biological stains. And the signal gradually fades out as the target's diluted. So Mohamed Iwada was doing this, and instead of just finishing at 10 to the minus 9, 10 to the minus 10, I believe because he was unhappy with the lab and, and he was out of there in the, in the summer, he was off to the Karolinska, and he dotted it out to 10 to the minus 18. And after the DNA faded out, it came back at 10 to the minus 15. So his friend Michael Dobbs said, he showed it to him, said, we'll do it again. And in the autumn of 1988 and the winter of 1999, they were able reliably to take ultra-dilute DNA, homeopathic DNA, and it would bind its complementary strand, but only at particular points. Then in the summer of 99, they moved from the old botany building at the corner of college and University to the new Earth Science Building. And there the assay became a little less robust, a little less reliable, and they stopped giving their attention to the work. You'll find, let's say, details of this on my website. In February of 89, they came to visit us because of our name being on the Benvenise paper, the Ultra Dilute Antigen paper and showed us this work, came for our advice, and our advice was do it again, replicate it. And as I say, they were able to replicate it quite reliably during that time. Well, what this suggested to me, the fact that the signal disappears and comes back, what it strongly suggested to me was that one had here a phenomena of the overlay of harmonics. If you take, you have a signal, and you then take harmonic of that signal and overlay it. You've changed, you've changed the pattern. And if you go on iterating and overlaying these, we have a phenomenon that's called Poincare's return, 
where the original information or something comparable to the origination, original information comes back. If you take a picture and you skew it at 45 degrees, pull it out and fold it back on itself, eventually you get like a television screen full of static. But at the 48th iteration, you'll have multiple, multiple overlay of the original image. And at the 241st iteration, repetition, of this overlay of harmonics, the original information comes back. So the thought that came to me very strongly with seeing this phenomena was that what happens in homeopathy? And here's where we start. In homeopathy, you take dig a liquid, you take water, and we've learned at school that water is amorphous, it's chaotic. And that's the nature of the nature of liquids, that they're chaotic. But it's a strain and a stress for the for the water to be chaotic. It would rather be organized. 